بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين الذين أذهب الله عنهم الردس وطهرهم تطهيرا واللعنة الدائمة الأبدية على أعدائهم أجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم وقوله الحق Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran and what he says is the truth. In the chapter of Fussilat, chapter 41, verse 53, Allah states, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in this blessed verse, he says, and we shall show them our signs within the horizons and within themselves until it is made apparent and clear to them that He is the truth. Is it not enough for them that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bears witness over all things? Sadaqallahu al azim Amanna billah. Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I welcome you in another episode, insha'Allah, where we will continue to use our intellects and our deductive reasoning to come to certain truths and realities that perhaps we may have accepted blindly or perhaps we may have rejected without thinking of. Now, in the last episode, we touched on the theory of evolution. Today, we'd like to talk a little more about evolution before we move on to the message, as this is a very important question that many ask. Is evolution true or not? Did we descend from apes or not? Now, the theory of evolution was actually a theory that was brought forth by a man by the name of Charles Darwin. And in his book, The Origin of the Species, which he published in the year 1859, he actually alludes to the idea of evolution. Now, what's interesting is that Charles Darwin um, was a man who wasn't a scientist per se. Now, he originally went to medical school. His dad was a physician. He came from a family of Unitarians, but they grew, he ended up, his father moved to an area that um, was a Trinitarian, uh, that had a Trinitarian church and a Trinitarian community. And he ended up going to um, a Trinitarian school and a Trinitarian community. Therefore, he ended up moving away from Unitarian ideas. Now, Unitarian means that they believe in the existence of one God while binitarian means that they believe in the existence of the Father and the Son, that they're both, that they're both one. This is in the Christian, in Christian dogma. And uh, the Trinitarians believe that the three um, are one, meaning the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now, we'll discuss this um, a little bit later. Our goal is to really understand Charles Darwin for a minute. Now, Charles Darwin grew up in this environment. His father was a physician, as I mentioned. When he finished high school, he was admitted into medical school. He didn't enjoy it much. He later on decided to focus on botany, and um, he had this great love for nature. He loved to observe nature. He, he loved to jot down you know, um, intricate details about different types of plants and so forth. Um, now, this made him uh, uh, really well known amongst the community that was involved in botany and plant biology and so forth and they requested that he actually joins their their ranks and he did and he was well respected and they actually told him and that what he should do is he should participate in a self-funded um, tour uh, to um, uh, to actually jot down all of the animals and creatures and the plant life that uh, uh, were on that expedition in uh, South and, and uh, 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 North America and different regions of the world where uh, someone was with him also jotting down the map of the world. So he was really pioneering, let's say. Now his father funded his expedition. His father wasn't too happy with, with what he was doing because he wanted him to be a doctor, but um, he supported his, his endeavor. So anyway, so he goes out, he tries to collect information, and as he's in the different islands, he discovers similarities between certain types of birds, specifically finches. And he theorizes this idea of natural selection. Now he had two theories of natural selection. One is the one that is very clear, which is the idea of the survival of the fittest, which 
no one disagrees with. So in Islam, we believe in the natural selection. We believe that in order for a specific type of animal to survive, that the fittest would have to survive. And those of us who've watched the Discovery Channel and National Geographic, we've seen this, right? Whether it's how the cheetahs have been able to survive or how the Siberian tiger has come back from extinction or um, how it is that species become stronger by the fact that um, uh, uh, only the strong are able to mate, right? While the weak end up um, being set aside, being ostracized, and their genes are not um, uh, uh, transferred to the next generation. So we all agree with this form of natural selection. This is called microevolution. In evolution, the theory of evolution, this idea is called microevolution. We don't have a problem with microevolution. You see, it wasn't actually um, uh, Darwin himself who outright said that we all or humans come from apes as, as is suggested um, uh, um, in contemporary evolution. In actual fact, he reserved his ideas and left it only for private settings and only in his later life before he would actually pass away that some of those ideas would come to light. However, there were many later on who would take his ideas and one of his ideas was the idea that um, man came from uh, for example, apes. Now the idea of man coming from apes really initiated from his studies on different sorts of animals such as him seeing a bear for example diving into the water with his mouth open as he paddled to catch the fish and what he realized was oh this looked like what a whale does and how a whale feeds and perhaps that this bear would actually then become a, a whale. Now, of course, modern evolutionary theory states that the opposite occurred, that it was um, uh, sea-bound or water-bound animals that would then change to become land-bound animals, correct? So the idea then, the original idea of uh, Charles Darwin isn't exactly as we know it today in the theory of evolution. That's an important thing to note. The second thing that's important to note is the idea that um, a species would turn into another species, an ape would turn into a human, or a bear would turn into a whale, or vice versa. That theory is based on something called random transmutations of the genes. Now, we proved that this system is an organized system, and that any sort of change within the system is based on an organized um, uh, uh, creator who organizes all things. Therefore, this issue or this idea of randomness is not one that we can accept. Therefore, the whole idea of evolution being based on random transmutation is refuted right off the bat because it's based on the theory of randomness and chaos. And we said that randomness and chaos and disorganization cannot create organization. For something to be organized, there has to be a creator of that organization. But let's play devil's advocate. Let's say, for example, that they're saying, yes, humans did originate from, let's say, apes, for example. Keep in mind, we totally and utterly agree with the fact that there were dinosaurs. We agree with the fact that there are ancestors of modern animals today, had ancestors in the Cretaceous era and in those um, eras of the dinosaurs and so forth. We also believe in the idea of the Big Bang Theory, right? We believe that there were, for example, the whole idea of boson, the boson um, particle, which is known as the God particle, that it was the, what modern science today believes, that um, it was the origin of the creation, the boson particle itself. We believe that, yes, that there was that. There was the Big Bang Theory. We agree with it. It's in the Holy Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran that, um, the worlds were closed and we opened them up and water came out and from it we created all life. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states this in the Holy Quran. We believe in Big Bang Theory. However, the question is, well, who made that reaction occur? Now the scientists, the cosmologists today, without mentioning any names, they actually don't claim that they know how the reaction occurred. They just believe that the reaction did occur. And it's media today that propagates the idea that 
organization came out of disorganization, that evolutionary theory is point and fact, when in reality it's still a theory. It hasn't been proven. Big Bang has been proven, but they haven't proved who is it exactly that caused the reaction to occur. You know, in the lab, if you want water to be produced, you take a test tube that contains hydrogen, a test tube that contains oxygen, you put them together. No matter how long you keep those two test tubes together and you mix the hydrogen and oxygen, water will not be created. The way that water is created is with you lighting a spark. That spark causes a bang and then water comes out. Water is then created. It is the initiation of the reaction by that person that caused the water to be created. Therefore, we say to those who say that Big Bang occurred randomly, we say, well, we know that there's no such thing as random and disorganization, and disorganization cannot create organization. There has to be a creator of organization. Therefore, there must be someone who initiated that reaction, and we claim that that is the unlimited creator himself. Now, you want to create, you want to call him nature, you want to call him Jehovah, you want to call him whatever you want to call him. At that point, it becomes semantics. Okay, it's not an issue that we're disagreeing on who created it. Nature in itself is created. So if you want to give it that label, that's one thing. But to say that nature, which is, which is created, created itself, that's an argument that's, in, that's a circular argument, and a circular argument is false. And if you say that, well, you know, creation came from one thing, and that thing had its own creator, and that thing has its own creator, and everything has its own creator to infinity, then that's an argument in series, and that's false too. Therefore, if we go back to the issue of evolution now, now that we've agreed that Big Bang occurred, and Big Bang had to occur by the creator of all things, the unlimited creator, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and if we come back to evolution, now we know that this organization cannot form organization. Therefore, random transmutations could not have occurred to create macro evolution which is where we have a problem, which is the statement that hum humans originally originated from apes. This is based on what? In order for the connection to occur, whether it's the change of a bear to a whale or a whale to a bear or an ape to a human, it's based on something called a missing link. This missing link is very important in proving the connection between two species. If I can't find the missing link, then I can't prove what? I can't prove this mutation occurred, that there is uh, an origin from that specific species and that that species changed to another. The other thing that I really want you to think about is, okay, definitely there have been many tries to say that there is a missing link and that they found the missing link and then it turns out that in reality this was a small ape or that it, re that it really wasn't a human being and so forth, that it wasn't the homo hominid, it wasn't between the homo sapien and, and um, the ape. I want you to consider something very important and that's that the proof is in the evidence. The reality is in the evidence. We've gone through an intellectual process in proving God's existence, that the world is organized and therefore it has an organizer, that there can't be any chaos, that this organization um, cannot create organization. Um, therefore, if you can't give me the proof, solid proof, that man did come from ape, then how can I even argue with you? Because you don't have a proof. If you make a claim, you have to bring the proof. Without the proof, you know, it's pointless to discuss the claim. However, so that we can wrap up this episode well, we say that once the proof is there, the missing link, is there and the solid proof is there, then inshallah we'll talk about it. In the meantime, what we will say is yes, we believe in dinosaurs in Islam. Yes, we believe in the Big Bang Theory. And we also believe that there were other creations on earth when Allah created the earth. We contend that when Allah created the first creation, Adam, that he came to an earth that already had creatures and it was already bountiful. So, Who's to say that it has to be either or? That's something I'd like to present to you. That's one. And two, until the missing link is found, then we'll contend that humans existed, that they don't come from the origin of apes. 
once the evidence is made clear, inshallah, we will discuss it. I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows us to see the realities and the truths of our existence through the intellectual reasoning. I ask that you remember us in your dua, inshallah. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salli ya rabbi ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala bayt al-tayyibin wa tahirin.